I have a huge problem with my 3D printers. You see, all of these 3D printers have been running for several weeks now, 24 seven nonstop, printing the computer case project. And that's not the only printers doing this project. Also the SV06 Plus, the SV06 and both Bamboo Lab printers have been going 24 seven since a couple of weeks now. See, this is just the prints from the last 10 days. It's such an immense amount of filament, probably 10 kilogram every single week. So many empty filament spools. And of course, a lot of failed prints. Prints where things won't stick, filament gets stuck nozzle clogging, all the good things. Every single one of these printers has a special task in this project. The Prusa Mini, for example, is only printing the hard disk holders. The Ender 3 V2 is printing the fan ring. The Ender 3 Pro is printing the top elements, which are quite difficult to get the right quality. The SV06 Plus is printing the main body elements. The smaller brother, the SV06, is printing the main board holders. The X1 Carbon is also printing the body parts because they are taking quite a long time. And finally here, the P1P is printing printing the bottom elements. So with every printer being specialized printing one part, the only thing that I have to do is when the print is done, I take it off the build plate and restart the print. And that's super convenient. And I'm under time pressure to deliver this project in the next couple of weeks. So I have a new project coming up and I cannot just stop one of the printers and reuse this for another purpose. So how can I solve this problem? So I guess the only way to solve this problem is by actually setting up a new printer. That's where the KDX Plus One comes in. If you're wondering why I have two of them, this is version one that I have been unboxing already on my channel, which has been revised. And now there's a new version V2 from KD that they were friendly enough to send me. So let's get this printer set up for my new project. Let's cut you free, my friend. So what are the projects I need this printer for? It's actually two projects. The first project involves some 3D scanning of this puppet head, which my puppet player friend gave me recently. They have a few other parts to print that I also want to do on this printer. But first, for this project, we need to scan this and make it into a 3D model. Of course, we're going to do some speed benches and other test prints. But the second project, the second project involves a poster and a picture frame and some 3D printed parts. But that's something for the next upcoming video where I'm gonna cover this project in depth. We're gonna to focus today on some test prints and this puppet replication project. Quick break here. I wanna let you know that since you're watching this on YouTube and you're not a Patreon or a channel member, channel members, which you can become if you click the join button down below and Patreons, doesn't matter whether you choose one or the other, see every video ad free. So if you're annoyed by ads, from YouTube, you can become a channel member or a Patreon and enjoy all my videos in the future ad free. Thanks for that. And I also want to thank every single patron for the support for the last years and also for the upcoming support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get back to the video. One thing that concerns me in the manual it says I should take the zip ties that hold this whole gantry in place. I should take them out before starting up the printer, but they're kind of stuck. So I cannot really get them out. So I guess I have to get the print surface a little bit up during the initial process. So I'm just going through the setup process in the menu. There is several steps. So we already taken out the packaging material. We have also removed the zip ties and the screws. And now the platform is coming up. Time to remove those huge zip ties because there was no chance doing that before. Let's be quick here. I think the instructions are pretty much clear. We're going to do some calibration. Now comes the good old paper sheet method of calibrating the distance. So there is a special sheet of plastic that we have to put between the nozzle and the print platform. So we're pretty close. 
yeah that feels good that's a little bit of resistance but not too much I still can get it in and out now the printer is doing a 16 point bed leveling What you're hearing now is the input shaper calibration that makes a lot of noise but it's there for calibrating the printer for faster printing and compensating vibrations during these fast movements. So the input shaper is done, let's load some filament. There is a few test files on this USB stick coming with the printer, so let's use the speed benchy. So let's take a closer look at this result. I would say for a first Benchy test, the quality looks really good. 17 minutes, this is really acceptable. We could probably speed the print up with special filament even more. Most of the time you're gonna be fine with this kind of printing speed and result. Now I have mentioned this several times, this is actually version 2 of this printer. Because I have been unboxing and testing version 1 on my channel already, a few of you will have the question, what is actually different with this new version? So let's take a closer look. So first of all with the old version, this whole bottom part was not as rigid and not made from metal. So there has been so many metal parts added to this printer, especially here in the bottom and in the frame, also underneath the bed. This printer is three to four kilogram heavier than the previous version. So it's supposed to be much more rigid. That was one major point of critique that this printer was made of so many plastic parts. And now I'm happy to see that this has been much improved. Another issue was with this whole bed area, when you print higher temperatures, around about 100 degrees, for example, for ABS and other special materials, the bed area would start warping. And so the first layer, basically the whole part, would bend and completely destroy and ruin your prints. I'm happy to see that there is much more metal parts and this whole bed area seems to be much more rigid. So I'm hoping that this is going to improve high temperature builds. I didn't test this yet, so we have to see that. And the last concern that I had with the version one that hopefully has been addressed with version two is the whole extruder and cooling system. Now, there is one big fan here that's cooling the parts, but there is a very small fan here that is cooling the hot end and is supposed to keep the upper part of the hot end, so the throat, cool while here we're extruding the filament. So the previous version was very prone to clogging because the upper end would probably get too hot. This fan doesn't look bigger, so I have no high hopes for that, but we'll see in the long term results whether this has been improved. It's time now to continue with my actual project, the puppet replication, and I've swapped out the filament for white now, and we have prepared something here on the computer. Here on my PC I've launched Kitty Slicer, the latest version, and I've loaded the first parts into the slicer program that we are going to print. These two hands are part of the puppet, and they have been already scanned, so we're gonna prepare them here We'll probably need some support material and we'll use the new organic supports. After slicing, we'll see we have the new organic supports. Looks nice. We just select standard print quality, generic PLA and the right printer. 15% infill is probably good enough for this print. And then we can send it to the printer. And this is going over Wi-Fi. Alternatively, you can also use the USB stick, of course. Now, while this is running, I'm gonna scan the puppet head so we can have it as a next print job ready to go. For this, we're going to use the brand new CR Scan Ferret from Creality. This is actually the real first project I'm doing with the scanner, so I'm really curious how this is going to come out. So it's supposed to be very easy with the Creality Scan software on my computer. I'm just starting scanning, just have to select the right settings here. This is a normal object. It's quite small. Uh, we only want the geometry, you don't need text in this case. High quality scan, no color mapping, and we're using a turntable. 
So we're gonna start from the underside and then we're going to move it slowly upwards when we have one full turn done. We have one full turn done. We're going to move the scanner up a little and we'll wait for another full turn to complete. And now we're moving slowly to cover it from the top. So I guess we can complete it here. We're gonna hit complete. Now this is our intermediate result. This looks pretty good already. What we wanna remove here is the pole and the stand so we can more easily print this and not wasting material for supports or anything. So we're removing this, cutting right here. Yeah, I think this is good enough. So this is the final mesh result. This looks really good. I guess we can now put it into the slicing program by exporting it. Looking great. One more thing, I remember that I need to print it actually in 70%. I think we can send this to the printer once the other print is done. I'd say both prints turned out really well, really clean, so I am happy. Hopefully the puppet player is also going to be happy about this. <laughs> Let's quickly remove the supports. Nice. Actually, I love these organic supports. They are easy to remove, so if you didn't check them out yet, definitely give it a go. Just want to leave a few words about this Creality scanner here, the Creality Scan Ferret that has been said to be by Creality. I was very skeptical at the beginning because the software was definitely not yet ready for prime time. Now I think they have improved a lot of things. You've seen this in just about a few minutes. I was able to scan the puppet head and get it into my slicing program and get it printed. So that was fairly easy to do. So yeah, thumbs up Creality, well done. And also thumbs up for Kitty for making this an easy to use product. Thanks for those improvements and also thanks for sending this printer. We still didn't test the high temperature prints yet with the closed lid on top of here. That's gonna be something for an upcoming project where I need to print high temperature parts. But our next project with this printer is the one with the poster and the picture frame and some 3D printed parts. So stay tuned for that video. Hit like, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed to see more videos. And I'm happy to see your smiling faces back on the channel soon. Bye bye. <laughs>